Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to another live, Hand of God live service. Services that we air two times a week. Once on the Sabbath, and then again on our midweek miracle, which is today. Today is not a, norm, a day I would normally do it, but this is the day the Lord gave me the word. So I try to be obedient to the things that God gives me to do because we don't know what the future may hold. So we just go in the name of Jesus and do what God leads us to do. Today we'll be speaking on a subject entitled, The Lord That Delivers. The Lord That Delivers. And today is 11-13-2017 in the year of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we'll be speaking once again on the subject, The Lord That Delivers. I've spoken on this word before from a different context and um that always shakes me but at the same time i have to do and be obedient to what god is calling me to do when the lord woke me up this morning i woke up with boots on the ground meaning that as soon as i woke up um i felt like there were some things in my spirit bubbling that the spirit of the living god wanted me to to deal with on today and sure enough didn't take long gotta fool with this camera didn't take long for me to get some a couple telephone calls and some things by way of email that's going on spiritually, spiritual battles that we fight. So when I woke up this morning, there was a lot of word bubbling in my spirit as soon as I opened my eyes. It's like I was in spiritual warfare, praying and believing God for things that were going on. So once again, we'll be speaking on the word, the word, the, excuse me, the Lord that delivers. And let us pray. Father, we thank and praise you. For waking us up and allowing us to see another day. We take it not for granted that we're here in the land of the living, Lord Jesus. There are so many that would have desired to be here, but the time was up on the earth and they had to carry on and move on. I pray in the name of Jesus for those outside the ark of safety, Father God. Somebody's out there in need of a touch, a healing, or deliverance in the name of Jesus. Most of all, somebody's out there who needs to be reconciled to you, Father God, in the pardon of their sins. I just pray in the name of Jesus Christ that nothing that is said here or done here or witnessed here would be in vain. I serve a purpose for being into existence, Father God, and I understand my purpose, which is why I preach and teach and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. There is no other hope that we can have in this world that we're living in other than in Jesus Christ. A lot of words in my mouth and a meditation of my heart to be pleasing in your sight, Father God. Use me, lead me, guide me, and direct me everything I do, will, and say. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Once again, we'll be speaking on a subject entitled, The Lord That Delivers. And we'll be coming out of the, the, the Bible in 1 Samuel 17, a few uh, short verses of scripture from 17, chapter 17, 37 through 40. 17 through 40. Um, excuse me. Chapter 17, verses 37 through 40. And the reason this why is, David said, Moreover, the Lord hath delivered me out of the paw of the lion. Let me read this again. Slow down. Rushing for no reason. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go. And the Lord be with thee. 38. And Saul armed David with his armor. And he put an helmet of brass on his head. And, and also he armed him with a coat of mail. 39. And David girded his sword upon his armor. And essayed to go. For he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these. For I have not proved them. And David put them off him. Verse 40, finally. And he took his staff in his hand and chose five, chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a, even in a script. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. Reading into your hearing, I have a gospel not the gospel, but the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel 17, 37. And we're speaking on the Lord that delivers. So we see in verses 37, David said, moreover, the Lord 
that delivereth me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear. He will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And we're talking about the Lord that delivers. The definition or one definition of the word Lord is someone or something having power, authority, or influence, a master or ruler, someone or something. So the Lord, he said the Lord that delivered him out of. What, what the Lord was showing me concerning this text is that there will be things that we will experience and go through in our lifetime. Me being 48 years old in the year 2017, um, there are things that I have experienced. And as I went through those things, some of them were heart-wrenching things, things that break people's hearts, things that, that hurt people. You know, you hear about things happening to your children, or you hear about maybe an ex who wants to break up with you. There are things that we go through or sickness, or there are things that we go through in this life that we're living that will cause you to wonder, why me? Or why do I got to go through this? Or, or how am I going to go through this? There are going to be things we're going to go through that's, that will shake us to the core of our foundation. Everyone's not living a life a uh, full bed of roses where they're just floating through and, and don't experience nothing and don't go through any heartache or heart pain. But those of us who go through things and experience things, those are the things that will make us uh, grasp hold of what we truly believe in. Those are the things that will, will make us wonder, do we have the strength to carry on, to keep on keeping on? And what David is telling us when he is starting to go through concerning when he stepped up to the plate to, to fight this Philistine, he says, David said, moreover, the Lord that hath, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion. What the Bible was letting us know is that when we go through things now, there are things that we can glean from, from our past where God has always brought us through to get to. In other words, we wouldn't be here right now if God had, had not used us to go through those former things to get to where we are now. So often I share with people that the very, you are living proof of grace. You are proof in and of yourself that God is able. Why? Because you're still here. There are some people that went through the very things that you're going through that are no longer here. I, I remember a time when I had to minister to a person that was going through a divorce and they was just losing their mind because they didn't know how they was going to make it financially, spiritually, any, they was just ready to completely give up. And I had to remind them of who they were before they got to that point to help them understand like this didn't make you and it can't break you. You got to keep yourself focused on the very fact that if God has allowed you to deal with this thing, he's given you the tools and equipped you with the very things you need to go through it and keep on keeping on. No, no, we don't like divorce. We don't like separation. We don't like sickness. We don't like disease. We don't like financial hardship. No, we don't like those things. But when we go through those things, what we have as a testimony of themselves that we could make it through is the very fact that we came through it. If we wouldn't have went through it, we would have nothing about it. So David says, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion, God had allowed him to defeat a lion. He says, and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. So through the tests and trials that David had dealt with by himself fighting the lion and the bear to protect his sheep, then it gave him enough confidence to know that he could make it through. Because we know uh, by way of just living in humanity that there's nothing worse than man, mankind. When you have to fight mankind, he says, I've already fought a lion and I've already fought a, a bear. So now God is putting him in the face of the most feared thing in his creation, which is humankind, a man. He says, if, I, if I've trained you to be able to, go, to fight a, a lion, if I've trained you to be able to fight and defeat a bear, now you're ready. Now you're ready. But David, we're going to read on to what he says. In Luke 4, 6, 46, it says, And why callest ye me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things which I say? I read that scripture into your hearing to bring to remembrance the fact that David says, The Lord that delivered me. Now this is one thing you got to know beyond a, a shadow of any and every doubt. Who you make your Lord. Some people put their faith and trust in their job, in their health, their wealth, their mother, their father, their name, their church, their denomination, their fellowship, their color, their skin. Some people put their faith and hope and their trust in all kinds of things. And when you do that, you make it your Lord. Because the definition of Lord, remember, is someone or something having power, authority, or influence. A master or a ruler. 
So Jesus said in Luke 6.46, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? In other words, if you want God, Jesus Christ, to be your Lord, that's where you put your hope, faith, and trust. You don't put your hope, faith, and trust in who sits at, in the office at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. You don't put your hope, faith, and trust in the fact that you got a couple dollars saved up in the bank. You don't put your hope, faith, and trust in the fact that you don't raise your credit score up. You don't put your hope, faith, and trust in the fact that you're eating right and you're doing an exercise. We put our hope, faith, and trust in the very fact that Jesus Christ has done everything we need to do to overcome the things we're going to experience in this lifetime. And when we're faced with adversity or when we're faced with a Goliath, that's where we glean from. We don't glean from all these other things. David made it clear and says, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me. Can't have no doubt. In other words, I'm going to speak for myself, 48 years old. Everything that I've experienced in my lifetime up to this point, God has brought me through those things. Divorce one, divorce two, divorce three. That's right, three of them. God has brought me through because each time it be feeling like a part of you is just being ripped out of you. And you're like, man, what am I going to do now? And I got to look to the hills from which come up my help. I can't put my faith, hope, and trust in the fact that, well, people are going to talk about you because this one didn't work. Or people are going to talk about you because that didn't work. And you're supposed to be a preacher in this black. I can't, put, I can't put my hope in that and my faith in that. I got to keep on doing what God has called me to do. I don't understand completely why God allows certain things to happen. But this one thing I do know. That when I pray to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he is able to deliver me out of anything and everything that I may be confronted with. Because the Bible makes it clear that he will not put on us. He will not allow us to experience, go through, deal with, or have to, have to face more than we can bear. But the scripture lets us know that God had prepared David to deal with Goliath. And the way he helped, helped him build up to that point is that he killed a lion and he killed a bear. Now, verse 38 says, And Saul armed David with his armor and put on his helmet of brass upon his head. Also, he armed him with a coat of mail. So, here you have the king and all the king's soldiers and all the king's men and even David's brothers. These are people who are trained to fight, men of war. Now, all these people, and none of them has the faith to step out and fight Goliath. But here comes David one day to bring lunches or whatever it is the Bible says he comes to do and to talk to his brothers. And he hear Goliath out there sounding off talking about his God, his Lord. And so David said, look, I'll fight him. I will, everybody else is scared. I will fight him. Where, where did he get that confidence and that faith from? Because God had already trained him on the backside where no one could see him fighting and defeating a lion and fighting and defeating a bear. In other words, what I'm saying to you is God has already prepared you for the tests and trials that you're facing today. He's already prepared you for it. So when the thing happens, you're not scared like everybody else. Everybody, oh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? David was already prepared to fight Goliath. He just didn't know who Goliath was until Goliath ran his mouth and presented himself. So when the situation or circumstances present themselves to you, you glean from the testimonies the fact that God had already brought you through that. And you know for a fact that you, he, if he brought you through that, he could bring you through this. And the Bible says in 38, and Saul armed David with his armor. This is what God shared with me when I wrote that scripture down. He says, you cannot fight the battles I have for you to fight with somebody else's faith. Yes, your mother prayed for you. Your father prayed for you. They took you to church. The bishop prayed for you. The pastor prayed for you. All these people can pray for you. But it's the faith that you have that's going to take you through this thing. The faith that you have in the Lord that you call Lord, which it should be Jesus Christ. In other words, you can, you can call other people. They can touch and agree with you. But it's the faith that's, that's inside of you. What's inside of you is what's going to help you. Because it says, and Saul armed David with his armor, and he put on a helmet of brass upon his head, and he armed him with a coat of mail. 39, and David girded his sword, David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. The Bible makes it clear he had not proved it. In other words, the, the, the armor that Saul had given David to fight Goliath with is stuff that he had never used before. In other words, let me put it this way. I got a son and I got children who play basketball. Excuse me. Now, there are times when they have a game coming up. You don't want to go out and get, buy no brand new tennis shoes right before you play a game. Because you want to make sure the shoes you're going to play in are broken in. Because when you buy brand new shoes and they're leather, they tight. And they don't give a lot. You don't want to play in no big game 
in, in armor or gear you haven't broken in or you haven't prepared. In other words, you're going to step up to this battle or fight. You want to make sure you're using stuff that you're comfortable with. Stuff that you, that's already proven. Stuff that's already broke in. In other words, when God takes you through this test or trial that you may be going through or about to go through, you want to be proven. You want to know that, okay, this is when I pray. This is when I fast. This is when I read. Yeah, people are going to tell you, you should do this, you should do that. They're not the ones going through it. They had a chance to fight Goliath, and they didn't step out there. Here it is, David. He says, look, I can't wear this armor. I did not beat that lion with this armor. I did not beat that bear with this armor. I beat that lion, that bear with my slingshot. My slingshot is what I got my faith in. That's, that's what I proved. I was out there bored sometime when I was watching Dad Sheep, and I was out there playing my slingshot, practicing with my slingshot. So the, the prayer life that you already have developed in the relationship you have with Jesus Christ, that's proven. The fact that you fast and pray when you fast and pray, that's proven. The fact that you talk to God and hear from God and you get fruit from that, that lifestyle that walks you, it's proven. The prayer partners you already have, they're proven. You know when you ask them to pray, they're going to stop what they're doing and praying. They're proven. So there's some proven things that you already have that's in place because God has prepared you for this. This ain't nothing new. This is just where you at. 39 said, and, and David said, I cannot go with these. They have not been proven. And I hear the scripture in Malachi where it says, prove me here with the Lord that I will not open the windows and pour you out a blessing that you cannot come to. In other words, God is telling you to prove him. He's giving you things to use in this battle. He's giving you things to, to, to use that are proven. Ain't nothing going to be brand new. A lot of times when people start to go through stuff and they start to collect information from everywhere because they're going through somewhat of a panic. Now they're faced with a Goliath in some way or another, and they're saying, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What have you been doing that has been fruitful? Once again, I said before, God will not allow you to suffer anything or go through anything that you cannot bear. So he's brought you up to this point to where you can do everything you know to do and lean on him as your Lord and go through this thing, and he can get the glory from it. So the things I went through in my life, in the walk that I have walked with God, I know what he desires from me to have a right relationship with him and it has been proven. Proven. In other words, ain't, ain't nothing going to be brand new. It ain't no time. It's, this is not a time to get brand new. It says, And David girded his sword upon his armor and he is saved to go for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these for I have not proved them. And David put them off of him. This is very key. I hear the Holy Spirit speaking concerning that you cannot get brand new when it's time for battle. You got to use the things that's been proven. This ain't time to switch fellowships. This is no time to try and try and develop something new that you ain't never done before. It's not time for that. That's 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 a form of panic, a form of, of unbelief. Like the scripture says, and the definition of Lord says, um, and why call us out of Luke 6:46, and why call ye me Lord, Lord? And do not do the things which I say. In other words, how can you call God Jesus Christ Lord, but yet you're living contrary to what his word says? That is a huge misconception in 2017. Yeah, I'm a Christian, but you, you're not acting like a Christian. I read my Bible, yeah, but you're not doing what the Bible says. But you call him Lord, but you're not doing what his word says. In other words, you can't call yourself something you're not and expect to be confronted with a battle or the Goliath and have the faith to go through it to get to it. Oh, you'll still go through Check the children of Israel, 40 years, an 11-day journey took 40 years because they were disobedient. They kept trying to round and round and round. So guess what? Some people's lives are like that. They say, Lord, Lord, but they won't do what the Bible says do. It says, forsake not the assembly. What's that mean? Go to church. It says, how, how, how have you robbed me? He says, in tithes, pay your tithes and offerings. It says you cannot be with man with man and or man as if with woman and woman as with man. In other words, you can't be homosexual. You can't do it. That's what the Bible says. So you can't call him Lord and live these ways and say that he's your Lord. It don't work that way. We didn't write the Bible. You get mad at Christians for reading what the Bible says. And we know as the story goes on, it says, and and, and the Philistine came on and drew near unto David. And the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistines looked about and saw David, he disdained them. For he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. And the Philistines said unto David, Am I dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed 
And, and the Philistine cursed David by his gods. So the Philistines tried to curse David by the, their gods. But he about to deal with that in a second here, as you know. And the Philistines said unto David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh to the fowls of the air and the beasts of the field. Then said David, verse 45, Then said David to the Philistines, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to you, excuse me, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou defilest. So you have to know beyond a shadow of any and every single doubt in your being. I preached a sermon one time as I prepared to close that the, 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 the title of the sermon was, It Just Got Real. Let me say this. It should not take for you to get a bad report or for you to have to go through something for you to realize this is real. If you're, if you're walking this walk or talking this talk and you're doing it in vain, you're wasting your time. If you're, if you're fooling around with things that have not been proven, you're wasting your time. This is not, I believe beyond a shadow of any, any doubt because it is written that there is a real heaven and there is a real hell. And if you think for one minute that you are going to heaven living like a, a hellion, it ain't going to happen. You can say, oh, well, I can repent before I, I heard somebody tell me, well, I can ask for forgiveness right before I die. Psh, not if you have an aneurysm and you fall like that. You ain't going to have a chance to say, Lord, forgive me. And besides that, it, it's your life that's going to dictate your eternal life, the choices you make. I don't know who this appeal is to, and I felt led and, led and compelled to share this word today. Sometimes I bring it on Wednesday. Sometimes I just bring it when God give it to me. And honestly, there was a whole lot word given to me, and my heart is, is somewhat heavy because I'm fighting spiritually and interceding for some folks that I know that are going through these type of tests and trials. But I want to encourage anybody and everybody who can hear that we have a, a God and a Lord who has delivered and who will and can and is able to deliver. We have to put all our hope, all our faith, and all our trust in Jesus Christ. And let me say this before I get out of here. I don't want to get fussy. Man, y'all got to gotta leave that, that, that president alone. Christians and believers, y'all spending too much energy and too much time. Let me help you understand what the Lord showed me when I was meditating concerning all these Christians who are spending so much time on their Facebook and their Instagram talking about this man at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. It's called misdirection. While you busy fussing with him, the enemy's at your back door uh, uh, sifting you like wheat because you fussing and screaming and hollering about something that ain't got nothing to do with nothing. We lift up Jesus Christ. We never lift up the problem. We never, there's nowhere in the Bible where it's written where Jesus Christ said, lift up the problem. It says, lift him up and he will draw all men. We're called to reconcile man to God. And one thing I learned a long time ago in maturity, growing up as a Christian, I remember when I first got saved, I was so full of zeal, or I should say when I first started walking with God. When I first started walking with God, sincerely, I was so full of zeal, anybody and everybody who was committing sin, I wanted to put them in hell. I was like, oh, you can't do that. You're going to hell. You can't do that. You're going to... God ain't called us to do that. He called us to help reconcile man to God. Now, how are you going to win somebody to Christ? Put it this way. If, if God put you in the face of the President of the United States, are you really going to talk to him about policies versus his eternal soul? What's more important than you? And why do you think God put you here? Put it in that context. If God puts you in the face of the person who you believe is doing so much damage and problems to the world, you're going to be talking about the problems of the world versus their eternal soul? Well, then you're, you're of no use. The Bible says that you're, not, you're, so, you're, no, no, you're good. You're good to be trotted underfoot of the horses. You're, you're saltiness. You're no good. The purpose for the believers, the Christians, the people who know God to be here or to help reconcile man to God. And we can only do that by the Lord that delivers, Jesus Christ. Now, you can complain and bicker and cry all you want to about what's going on in this world, and it has no significance over the purpose and the reasons that we're here. None. Zero. Nil. Nada. Put all your energy, faith, hope, and trust in Jesus Christ. Period. The Lord that delivers. Father, we thank and praise you for your word. We thank you that your anointing still in 2017 destroys each and every yoke. I don't care what the sickness is. I don't care what the disease is. I don't care who the oppressor is. You've defeated, you've defeated it all. 
you've given us victory over it all. Now, it's up to us to stand on your word, backed up by the Holy Spirit, preaching and teaching the unfallible, undisputed word of the living God. Standing up on the mountaintops, preaching this gospel, Lord Jesus. I just pray in the name of Jesus, Father God. And I intercede for those right now that are going through to get to, that whatever the test trial may be, Father God, some people are being dealt with through their children, some people are being dealt with through relationships, some people are through their jobs, some people through health or credit or, or situations and circumstances. We don't know specifically unless they call and ask for prayer, Father God, but we pray, and the Bible says the strong should bear the infirmities of the weak. We're not saying you're weak, but sometimes you get put in a weakened condition when you're fighting and you get tired. The Bible says that we should not get weary and doing well. We pray for them, Father God. We stand in intercession. I touch and agree with my brothers and sisters that's watching right now. That those that believe in Jesus Christ beyond a shadow and in every doubt that he is who he says he was, is, and is to come. That he can do anything and everything but fail. I pray for the healing bomb of Gilead to cover those that are sick right now from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. I don't care what it is. It doesn't belong in their body, which is the temple of the Holy Spirit. We cast it out right now in the name of Jesus and stand on the word of the living God. We thank you and praise you for this platform you've given us through Ustream.tv, YouTube, and Facebook Live. I thank you, Father God, that your word will not return to you void. It serves a purpose, a reason, and it will complete a season as we go into the next. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus Christ, name we pray. Hallelujah and amen. May God bless you in heaven's face continually and always smile upon you.